welcome to Joe Avalon's Cuppa Chats, and uh, I hope you have a nice warm cuppa ready for today's conversation. And I'm joined today by Priestess Moon. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Priestess Moon, a Western Australian artist with five solo exhibitions to her name, as well as numerous group exhibitions. Uh, her artwork is renowned as colourful, decorative and highly symbolic, and is created to bring enchantment to the viewer. Welcome, Priestess Moon. <laughs> Hi, thank you. <laughs> it's good to have you. So um, to start with, um, I'm here on the east coast of Australia on a Awabakal land. Um, we're mm. commonly known as Lake Macquarie near Newcastle. And oh, yes. Uh, yes. yes. So, you know, we're like lake people here. Oh, you've got a dog there. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I don't. It's just like, it's just me and my messy studio. That's all it is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's okay. And where are you today? So I am in Perth, Western Australia, in mm -hmm. Darlington, and it's known as Wajuk Noongaland, and we live in the hills, so I'm surrounded by gum trees and oh, bush. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, uh, just a bit <laughs> earlier, I saw a glimpse of your gum tree out the window. I think that's really nice. To, I grew oh, up with a gum tree out of my at the, 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 the at my bedroom window too. So it was sort of. Yeah, I feel like I live in a tree house. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Back to nature. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to meet you and to, um, and to um, have you join me here today. Um, I guess um, to start with, um, I've connected with you through your Oracle decks and to date mm. you've got four Oracle decks out or if you've got... Yes, four, I do. Four. So I have four, yeah. The Enchanted Spell Oracle, which came out 2017. Yes. I've got it here. Uh -huh. Yes. And that's <laughs> that's actually, I got that one in stock because I was doing a medieval event and I thought, oh, I need, oh, I need some medieval products. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's where I was introduced to you. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, cool. Actually, probably 20, probably 2017, actually, because I think that's oh, when I did my first yeah. one. Yeah. Um, nice. Yes. And then your next one came out a couple of years later, the Making Magic Mini Spell Cards. The Mini yes, Spell Cards. Yeah, the little mini spell cards, yeah. And yeah. I think um, people are using those, or, or you sort of suggest to use those in, um, in actual spell workings? Yeah, so the, the whole intent behind this deck was not for, it can be an oracle deck, so you can, you know, pull a card for the day and go, oh, look, um, power symbol to create lucky events that's a nice one so you can do that <laughs> perfect <laughs> but the real intent of the deck was to consciously choose something and say i want let's see, i want my wish to come true yeah and so you work with this symbol as a tool like you know ca uh, candle magic or crystals yes. yeah so you use these symbols as a tool like those things to um, create the energy and put out the energy of, of what you want. So that's that's the whole idea behind the symbol work. But it can it can work as an oracle as well for sure. Because I I love the idea of you know choosing a card and getting a surprise. That always works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Earth, yes. <laughs> yeah. So either, either or. But um, I like the idea of instead of being passive with oracles, you know how. With a lot of oracles, you you shuffle the cards and then you choose one, and you're like, right, well, I'll, that's that's giving me some something to work with and something to think about. Yes. With this particular deck and this this one here, which is the bigger, this is the bigger version that has a guidebook and some spells in it as well that that show you how to use the symbols a bit more. Yeah. It's more of an active product where you you actually choose what you want to work with yeah. rather than choose you but you can do that as well yeah. so <laughs> yes no but that's that, so that's great because that's you know, i'm seeing those as as tools to work to help focus focus your intention and your energy yes. and create that energy yeah, yeah that's to enhance. exactly what it is yeah yeah because yeah. i've seen um you know your pictures and other pictures or other people's pictures you know when they've shown how they've used your cards you know it's it's in the context yeah. of of you know candles a crystal you know an intention yes. written um and yes, yeah. yeah yeah 
the, you use you use them in spell work like you use them in your spells like say you'd use an amethyst crystal you'd use one of these symbols with yeah. the same kind of energy so i know that amethyst is really good for setting boundaries so you'd use a symbol perhaps like the elements where you you're setting good boundaries around yourself and your energy so yeah that's mm. that's how it works Mm-hmm. that's that's how I wanted because I was using oracle cards and I'm like oh I just I feel like I want to take a more active role in this yes um that's why a lot of my oracle cards have action you know they have action items so the, with the enchanted spell and the enchanted unicorn they have actions they have little spells that you can do yes to work with each card yes so that, yeah, that oh. was the whole idea but the original the original idea was um I did actually self-publish a deck called the Priestess Moon Oracle in oh. 2015. Oh. Only, yeah, I only had a hundred of those uh, because it was very expensive to self-publish. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever tried to print something, but it's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know lots of people who have printed things and yeah. they say the same. <laughs> it's, well, it was super fun and really rewarding, but you know, this, this is a not-for-profit thing for sure. So you do this because you love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, the, so the, the idea came from me working with this because I wanted each card to have a little, let's see if I can see. Yeah. So this card, this is an Illuminate Your House spell, which oh. actually made it, it actually made it to the Enchanted Spell Oracle, this spell. Okay. So, um, that was kind of the seed of the idea, the Enchanted Spell Oracle, to have a set of cards where you could work mm. with them as well as enjoy the meanings and work with the meanings as well. Mm-hmm. And those little cards are just the great little size to have on an altar or, yeah, you know, uh, a little corner space. Yeah. I love yeah. these. I put these in my handbag. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'll go, Ooh, what, what, what do I want to today? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go for protection. Yes. I literally will pop it in my handbag and I just, and I'll refer to it in my mind. And then, you know, it kind of reinforces that idea. Yeah. So that, that's how I work with it. I mean, some people might think it's a bit weird, but I love it. No, <laughs> it I think the idea of taking, <laughs> taking it as an, as an active tool, like I, I see all of yeah. these products as tools, uh, you know, whether they're, 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 they're well, no, not whether they are tools for bringing forth our own knowing our own energy focusing our energy and intention um whether we're calling in other uh gods or uh, angels or or whatever whatever and 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 the symbols so how do you um how do you choose the symbols or or where did good question so (laughs) i'm I'm just going to turn around and get the original document before me yeah you're right yeah bit close to me I don't want to knock things over. Like my studio is a bit like flossy tea cakes fur coat. Have you read that book? No, I haven't, <laughs> but I think it's on my list now. <laughs> it's really cool. So it's a kid's book, but it's about this room that has all this stuff in it. And, and this is my studio. Right. <laughs> so look at this gorgeous document here. Yes. Yes. I, I laminate it because it's 25 years old and it's called... Oh. Magical amulets and talismans, and I found it in a magic shop in Edinburgh. Oh. And I bought which one did I buy? I bought this one, this symbol here. Yes, happy, yep, happy, love and good friendship. Now, yep, yeah. So these these are all um, hun- these symbols are hundreds of years old, and have been found in various tombs and burials, and um, inscribed on walls around the world and so I was just captivated by these symbols and I started working with them so I I would I would paint them and draw them yeah I stick them up in my studio I don't know if you can see I've got a couple yeah up there in my studio yeah and just I just consciously started to work with these symbols and that was the but this was 25 years ago this is or 20 years ago Mm. and that was the seed of this making magic deck yeah with, with these well, about all these particular charms mm. now what i did because i wondered if there was some copyright yes. issues i contacted the company and i said look i'm thinking of making this oracle card deck um and, 
am I allowed to use these symbols? You know, I know you've got them in your brochure and I know that you sell talismans with them. And they're like, no, no, they're in, it's totally fine. They're in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Nobody owns them because they're so old and nobody really knows where they came from. Although I do have a book that, that gives a good explanation of perhaps where they think it came from. Came mm -hmm. from. So that's good. Um, <laughs> And so I thought, well, that's great. I can, I can uh, create something with these symbols and put them out into the world and share them with others. But I also created my own symbols. So I've, I've really started going into working and channeling my own symbols mm -hmm. for things. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you'll see, I'm just trying to look for the, the symbols that I created, like this one here. That's the old abracadabra charm, mm. but I've added wings to it to give it a bit of a angelic energy. Yeah, a bit of a lift. So, yeah. Yeah, a bit mm. of a lift. Yeah, because mm. it used to be a charm uh, against malaria. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It used to be a charm against fever and malaria. And then as time went on, it just became known as a, a good luck charm. Yeah. Because so you needed good luck to move through the, <laughs> to recover from did, malaria. You needed you a bit then. of luck. Mm. So back in those days to move through a, an infection like that yeah you did <laughs> that's for sure but um i was having a sip of tea um oh i was going to make another point what was i going to say oh i can't remember anyway i lost my train of thought but yeah these these symbols started life when i went into a magic shop in edinburgh which i love and i loved edinburgh it really is a magical cool like crusty wonderful place yeah. i could totally live there <laughs> and it's definitely possible <laughs> yeah so um the next deck um i am working on a symbol deck at the moment and it's a medieval symbol deck but it's mm -hmm. ones that i have created myself using a medieval herbal as inspiration for the symbols mm -hmm. so it's it's it sounds it when i'm working with it it just it comes so easily and it, it seems so logical but then when i try and explain it it's like hmm <laughs> how do i explain this better <laughs> so i'm working on that i'm working on that <laughs> so be, yes. those symbols are going to be quite different to the ones that the, the universal the the ones that you've already worked with yeah they're they're quite similar they're quite similar i have one i have one here that i've been working on this one okay. and this one's for soothe this is for soothing and calming mm. and this comes from uh the comfrey plant and so in the actual manuscript the plant looks like this yes and so i've i've gotten that comfrey plant sort of stylized it shall we say yes. and then added the moon and a lot of space to add some calmness to oh, it so wow. yeah it, okay it's um, that's how i work yeah <laughs> it just, these concepts that come to me and and I just I just have to do it I have to bring them through otherwise they just won't leave me alone <laughs> and, and if you don't bring them through it kind of holds up the works for the next lot of things that they might be brewing <laughs> I think it does yeah I've learned now not to ignore that kind of thing I just yeah the, the way that I work is maybe for six months I'll marinate a few ideas and mm. things will come to me and I'll write them down and then for like a, a two days or a week, it just just write it all down, or the or the images will come to me, and I just have to absolutely ride the unicorn, <laughs> as people yes. say, and just just do it until it's done, you know, and don't stop that that um, flow of energy. So that's but it's very enjoyable to work like that. But um, I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm out of it, and not really available to my family when that's happening. Yeah. But luckily it's only a couple of days to a week and they're used to it now so it's <laughs> good that's very good and understanding and i suppose um your family are, are big enough to feed and bathe themselves now right <laughs> oh yes yes my daughter's 17 and and my husband as i say came house trained so he's fine <laughs> They're all good. good. <laughs> I know where the buttons on the microwave are. <laughs> mm. 
Exactly. <laughs> so <Yes. handy. laughs> Actually, my daughter's 17 next week. So oh, wow. my youngest. Yeah. yeah, so I know what you mean. Yes, so they, they're all very self-contained at home. My husband's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so with the Enchanted Spell Oracle, which was your first one, how... Mm. The inspiration from that was from those original the, the that that um, the the, symbol sheet that you gave you showed earlier or yeah I did I did work with symbols so the enchanted spell oracle is a a snapshot of my art over the last twenty years mm. which I did a lot of medieval style manuscript work because I just loved it the watercolor right. and gold leaf mm. um. And so you'll find in those artworks, I'm just getting, I did work with symbols in these artworks. I'm just trying to find a good one. So if you see the, this more Egyptian, but you'll see the yes. eye of Horus there. Yes. In in yeah. And yeah, you'll find throughout the art, artworks, I have included symbols from my original sheet here. Yes. Protection one, that's a nice one. So yes. these are all original artworks that were exhibited and then sold. So I, I don't have them on me anymore. They, they were, uh, you know, artworks for exhibitions basically. Mm -hmm. And then each, I, what I would do is when I, when I create the artworks, I'd write a whole page, I'd almost write an essay on each artwork and what it meant. Mm -hmm. It just, I just, I just felt like I had to do that. And, um some you know i should i don't i'm not really allowed to know who bought my artworks it's a privacy thing and that's fair enough but i'd love to be able to give the people who bought the artworks like the page that i'd written about them oh. however <laughs> that translated into the the oracle deck and yeah. the guidebook yeah so if that's, they wanted to know the, they could buy the deck <laughs> they could buy the deck <laughs> i'll get that page <laughs> flip through oh um, there it is <laughs> there it is yeah um so there's it's a prosperity one there mm -hmm. so um each artwork did really come with a meaning and you know i would i would go into what the symbols meant and what the pomegranate meant and mm -hmm. just the symbology of that and so that's why i thought they'd make a really good oracle deck because the meanings were already there and so the, the original one that I did start with is the Priestess Moon Oracle. So this is the one that I oh, created yeah. myself with little cards. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. And yeah. that's the, that they're the cards for that book that you showed earlier. Yeah. Yes. So this, yeah. Yeah. This one here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's all, it's all been a bit of a process but a really lovely one. And I'm just so happy and grateful to Rockpool that they've put my work out into the world because mm. I guess we all do want to share our work with people and to be able to do it on such a big scale is, has been really nice. And, and people really resonate with it. You know, the, the, the decks have found people who really love them and work with them and really enjoy working with them. So that's, always really nice <laughs> when that happens <laughs> yeah and, and um and yeah people talk about them they 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 you know create their own imagery that you know they create their own sort mm. of altar and and set up and yeah. share that with yeah. people as well and i'm sure they tag you in it maybe and um yeah, so you get to yeah. see it sometimes <laughs> yeah it's nice yeah it's nice to see it yeah um there was one particular with the it was with the symbol deck a lady had um laid laid out cards in in sort of layers okay. and um had a it, it was almost like station stations so i can't I can't show you but they, you know they were they were layered out and each one had a candle with it ah. and i thought that's such a good idea doing a layered spell like that so you choose symbols that are similar to each other Oh. That will all work in harmony, you know, yep. sort of almost like a crystal grid. Yep. You know how you grid crystals for, to create a certain energy. With these, you can do that with these cards and create a grid 
to amplify the the energy of the spell that you want to create mm -hmm. and also work with crystals so my next deck each card has a plant and a crystal and they all work together in harmony to create that uh, to amplify that energy that you want to put out there so i'm working with the prototype at the moment on my altar and having such a lovely time with it as well yeah i've ordered a few more crystals too you know, <laughs> can you ever have enough crystals oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you, you can't, like, you, you need crystals for a particular purpose and then you might need mm -hmm. the same one for yeah. another particular purpose. <laughs> Look, you know, it has to be done. <laughs> if I need 40 crystals, I need 40 crystals and that's just the end of it. <laughs> and it's a full moon tonight, isn't it? So, it is, yes. Yeah, yes. I'll late be tonight. popping out my, tra my heavy tray of crystals. I'll be popping that outside. <laughs> will you? <laughs> I will, I will, yeah. I find that they do come in sort of very light and glowy afterwards. So, yeah, it's worth lugging them outside. <laughs> <laughs> you almost need to build like a little platform out of the window so that you can just sort of go okay open the window oh, pop them outside that's, that's, right, that's a come. good idea <laughs> it is a good idea <laughs> that just came to me you know <laughs> yeah just like push them out them yeah in. that's it <clears throat> slide the window closed keep the cold out yeah. <laughs> i like it <laughs> And, and are you still um, exhibiting your work or do, doing art for, or creating art for um, general exhibition, not for Oracle Cards? So the, the last one I had was my, the, it was called a Hills Open Studio. So up in the Shire mm -hmm. of Mundaring, um, there was a trail for people to go along and visit artists along the trail. Oh, wow. And I was one of those. And it, I set up my house like an exhibition. So it, it was, um, an exhibition where people could come in and look at the paintings and I had oracle cards there as well and and buy artworks and yeah that I would call it my hills open studio exhibition I guess and so that went over two weekends mm. in March and it was just it was really nice getting organized for that exhibition because I hadn't I hadn't had one for I think since 2015 my oh, last wow. one things oh. with wings yeah um I've, i just find I, th I feel like i've i've done exhibitions because i've been been doing them since 2000 mm. so it's like 20 21 years mm -hmm. and i feel like i'm with with the oracle cards i can share my artwork and my concepts with so many more people, which is what I want to do, rather than just a very insular exhibition here in the hills that only a few people come to. So I, I feel like I'm, I mean, my, my thing that I wanted was to be an artist, an exhibiting artist and have an exhibition every year. That's what I wanted. But the older I get and the more my values change, I realise that I, that's not, that's not what I want to do. I, I want to write and I want to be able to share my concepts with people rather than just have pictures on a wall. So it's, it's evolved. So I, I'm not seeking out exhibitions so much. No, no, probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, do, I still do, yeah, I still do artworks. I still paint and draw and I've been working on my symbols here in mm. my studio. And so, yeah, I'm still an active artist, but perhaps the uh, medium is now oracle cards rather than exhibitions. Yeah. And I get uh, the beauty of the oracle cards. I was just thinking, um, <clears throat> you know, the beauty of the oracle cards is that you're not just having one one piece of artwork from that artist, particularly if it's an artist mm. that you you really enjoy. You're, you're you, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're purchasing up to 36, 40, or it depends on, on the, the arrangement, but yeah, that's the it. pieces yeah. of artwork. So you're actually getting a much broader um, or much more in depth, sorry, um, study of the way that person works and the sort of yeah. things that inspire you. And, and um, it's kind of, it's not, it's not just here. It's, it's all the way, you know, um, mm. and it's, and it's mm. your own, it's your own little printed copy. 
that's it. That's your own printed copy. And I'm sure you'd sell the originals if somebody asked. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, well, maybe, yeah, maybe. The, um, <laughs> with the Enchanted Spell Oracle, I do have, I've probably got three, three or four originals left of, wow. of the artwork. But wow. yeah, all the all the rest have have sold. Yeah. Have sold. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um I'm gonna ask a technical question if I can. Mm -hmm. So you've you you know, you've painted these beautiful artworks and then they're translated into a digital form. Have you done that yourself? Mm -hmm. So that So um there's there's been a few different ways with, with the Oracle card deck. So with the enchanted spell oracle, mm -hmm. I actually took a picture of this with a, a proper camera with a flash just so it would capture the gold leaf mm, you see? and yeah. so you'll see in the you'll, you'll see in the cards that it's actually captured the gold leaf really well true the way that i photographed it and then i downloaded the photographs onto my computer worked on them with photoshop to make them really beautiful okay. and then i send I sent those files to Rockpool and they with with the idea of what I wanted them to look like and they they did they created the background and the little scroll mm. there mm. and popped popped this back of the card idea on there as well. Did you design so the back as well? I did, yeah. 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 So that's that's like a Photoshop design of this this little picture here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Of course. But, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how I did that deck. But with the symbol deck, let's see if I I've got my originals here. Uh -huh. I just painted on watercolor mm. with with black watercolor paper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, paint. I mean, you see here, here. That's those original ones. Right. There. Yeah. Then I scanned those and sent those to Rockpool and they actually had more of a hand in designing these like they came up with the black background and the gold mm. which I think looks really beautiful yeah so I wanted them you do you do have you do have a lot of say in how your final deck looks and I said I wanted them to look quite witchy almost sort of Victorian witchy you know mm. the kind of and so I think I think that's come through quite nicely mm. but the the bigger deck is is way more medieval i don't know if you've seen the the guidebook but on the what i love about this guidebook is there's a medieval block you can see that oh yes block. yes yes i just love that it's just it's just <laughs> how, that's how i wanted it to look yeah <laughs> but rockpool have a really great talented team of designers that do do this kind of stuff so you you send them the artwork in its best form possible mm. and you send them the guidebook mm. in a word document mm. and then they they make it magical beautiful <laughs> <laughs> they make magic and make it beautiful because yeah. uh, it was but already beautiful always, <laughs> yeah yeah but you always have the final say which is nice yeah yeah mm. So one thing with the Enchanted Unicorn Oracle though, which, which was, that was a bit of a process, is that I created texture drawings. So if you look at these texture drawings here, mm. you know, they're, they're felt pen and they are, you can see the scribble marks. Yes. Basically. And, yes. Yeah. And the, and so and the I, overline and yeah, but that's yeah. its charm it really, too. I, I thought so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Right, <laughs> you really, and it's really hard not to get those overlines when you're drawing with texture. Right, you know? and who doesn't love drawing with texture? It's I so know, much right? <laughs> absolutely. There's the inner but, child there expressing herself. <laughs> absolutely, that's exactly what it is. But and and fair enough. Like Rockpool knows what sells and what what appeals to people, and um, I did I did have to put those images on in Photoshop and make sure that the color was nice and bold and there was not that much texture there. But whilst I was working on them in Photoshop, I also added a lot of new and different little nuances to the paintings, mm -hmm. plus the little symbols. 
each oh, it's it that this way yep Is it? You can yes <laughs> yes yes i can see yes, that yeah that's the that's the shine symbol there. yes yeah. but whilst i was working on the unicorn deck i realized that a lot of the cards were had had similar meanings to the symbols with the making magic deck mm -hmm. and so i had the idea to add to add the symbol in there yeah. there's the sun symbol there yeah, yeah. and nice. and it was yeah. a really deep dive into the the concept of that deck and and i was like just kind of got lost in it actually so in a way it was really good to be able to redo these in photoshop and really mm -hmm. you know get them to their best their best quality because then you've and got layers there. You've not just got the paint, layers, but the text yeah. and work. You've got the, the layers of yeah. the symbols and the layers of the writing around and in yeah. behind and yeah. in front of it. Yeah. And I put little yeah. magical dots and like yeah. little. Oh, it was just, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was super fun. I loved it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you see, each deck is a real process. And mm. so the, the original concept and artwork that you come up with might not generally be the the finished product the finished product just gets better and better and better mm. as you work and then you collaborate with the designers and you collaborate with the editors at the publishing company and then it becomes this incredible product that all these people have worked on so mm. it's always beautiful to see the finished product and like oh my god it's amazing <laughs> i love it absolutely absolutely <laughs> I'd like to thank God and my mum. And... <laughs> and all the magical unicorns who were involved all in the, the creation unicorns, of this product. Yeah. <laughs> Unicorn spirits. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's in your dedication page, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we write that at the end. Let's have a written first. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's... Oh, um, gosh. So that's interesting, isn't it? Then that this sort of like this theme that's worked all its way through, um, mm. through all of the decks and your, and the artworks. Um, I mm. noticed that you know with the two making magic um, decks that the theme of magic manifesting your dreams. Would you say mm. that that was all the way through all of the work there? Yeah, uh, particularly with the making magic decks, because mm. I very strongly feel that the the symbols really help in helping you create what you want like mm. i i honestly believe that mm -hmm. so when you take a symbol so, oh, again the protection one has come up <laughs> so when you when you take a symbol and you really work with it it's in your consciousness so you bring you now how can i explain this mm. before you can create something you have to you it has to be in your consciousness consciousness first you have to think of that first you have to think of that amazing thing that you want and believe it's a possibility and then what i like to do is use these symbols as a tool to create that and put that out there and so you're focusing on this thing mm. very um in a very linear way you know you get mm. you get to harness that focus and make it happen Mm -hmm. I, and I do, I do really believe that because, you know, how I was mentioning I was going to Hobart in August. Mm -hmm. I get to graduate from the University of Tasmania. I did an online associate degree. Mm -hmm. It's a Bachelor of Dementia Care. It's an associate degree in dementia care. As, and throughout the study, you study the brain and how it works. And it's fascinating. It is fascinating the way the brain works. It's like we hardly... We hardly even know what's going on up there, but we're getting there. We're getting mm. there. Mm. And one of the big things that I found in my course of study was that what you think about um, creates big, thick highways in your, your neural pathways. So that thing that you think about over and over and over again becomes a really thick highway in your brain. Mm. And the, the thoughts that you concentrate on the most choose the good ones <laughs> this is what this is the big yeah. takeaway i got from it you choose the good ones um you don't choose the ones where you go oh you know maybe i should go on a diet maybe i'm too chubby you know blah blah you know how 
yeah. most people in the Western world think they're too big. <laughs> you're creating, you're, you're creating that and you're perpetuating it by the way that you think. And what I do love about Oracle cards or spell work or ritual is that what you're doing is you're changing that and you're focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. And I feel like they're such good tools to shift that focus and keep that focus on a more positive, mm. this is what I want, this is what I'm going to work towards. Mm. So mm. that's, it's, you know, a lot of people sort of like, what are you doing a Bachelor of Dementia care for? And I'm like, well, because I want to and I like studying and it was interesting to me. <laughs> And they're like, are you going to get a job with it? And I'm like, I just think, you know, probably not. However, nothing is ever wasted. No. And so doing this degree has taught me so much about how the human brain works. And it's like actual science mm -hmm. that the more you focus on positive thought, mm. the better chance you have of creating a nicer life it's just I know a lot of people think it's it's like a woo-woo saying oh, you know just think positively and all that kind of thing but it's actual proper science it's been backed up mm. with uh, uh, peer-reviewed journal articles mm. so mm. it's it was very interesting to see that and go oh my god it's not even just woo-woo it's science <laughs> <laughs> I think we get very excited when science backs up the things that we know intuitively. Ooh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not woo woo, it's science, all right? <laughs> yeah, it's science. <laughs> well, you'll see in my guidebooks that I have actually, um, in my bibliography, I've, I've put uh, peer reviewed journal articles because in the course where I found it, it's like I want to back up what I'm saying here. Mm. I will always mm. put in my sources of information about what I say and what I've what I pass on to other people, it is backed up by proper books and journal articles. So it's, it's always nice to have that backup, you know, <laughs> it's like you, you do the proper research and yep. you just discover so much. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just love that, that course, you know, the, the associate uh, degree that you've done um, mm. and, and how, you know, I, the idea of education being not for education's sake, but only for getting a job. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the, the, mm -hmm, yeah, but, there is that. <laughs> that's right. But the 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 in actual fact, it's going to inform more and more of what you're doing at, in your artistic work, which is already your it's already your work, isn't it? It's it, it's all it's already my work. And to be fair, when I did start the degree, I think it was back in 2015 mm. um i i hadn't i hadn't published any oracle card or no, that's an true mm. and um what i did find it really helped well i do i do have a bachelor of arts in design and but that's like this is before computers <laughs> just giving away my age here but you know how design is pretty much computer based now when yeah. i did design it was all like cut and paste and photocopying mm -hmm. and taking photos and putting the photo and you know photocopying that and that was your piece of work and we did have computer it was one unit one day a week mm -hmm. it was like an hour a week mm -hmm. and it was uh designing the interactive atm machine things that's all it was oh and so a lot of people would say that that degree doesn't really translate anymore into modern day but i'd like to think that i have been visually trained and that i am using that now when i create my oracle card decks so again wasn't wasted didn't get a job as a designer <laughs> but i feel like i am using it any i'm using this i'm using both my degrees in creating what I, I want to create and they have helped and it it's you know I don't want to think that anything that I've put so much work into was wasted because I don't think it is when you look back no. when you look back on things where you might deviate from a certain path yeah but no you didn't you actually had to go down that path to to become the person you're meant to be so yeah yeah, yeah. 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 quite yeah. philosophical but you know you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> 
to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it is. That's what it is. It is philosophical. Yes. And education is learning and, and applying it is, is, is also more learning. I mean, there's no point learning if you're not going to apply it and, and, and mm. produce, produce something, not necessarily like an oracle deck, but produce something that you can then yeah. look back on and, and build on. Yeah, well, what, and what it did do as well is um, the, the Bachelor of Dementia Care was very much about its essays, its essays, essays, essays mm. about how the brain works, what, what, what are you trying to say, the structure of an essay. And I found that that discipline really helped me to write my oracle card decks. So mm. with each card, you go, why... What is this card about? Why is it going to help you? How is it going to help you? Exactly what does it mean? No waffle. Get to the point. <laughs> and I found the discipline of writing essays in a, in a medical style mm. really did help me focus mm. on, on how to write in a good structured way. So, yeah. again, yeah. it might sound a bit, a bit too, you know, when you're working with Oracle card decks, a lot of a lot of that logic and structure might not be the first thing you think about but you do need that logic and structure to communicate with others yeah what you want to say and how you want how how you think it's going to help to help yeah. them so yeah yeah no rambling <laughs> oh no rambling <laughs> okay all right that's just for the introduction <laughs> yeah yes yeah <laughs> oh so um I also have stumbled across um, a blog that you write. Um, yes. A foodie yes. blog that you write, which is. Yes, my Lady Chardonnay. Lady yes. Chardonnay, which is <laughs> most amusing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's, my fun, that's my fun outlet. So um, I think I started that, I think it was about 2012. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to discipline. I wanted the discipline of writing something. I think it was once a week mm. and, and just, just writing about anything really. Um, and just putting it up there really for my own personal amusement. <laughs> I think I've got like 160 followers on Instagram. It's like no great shapes at all. <laughs> this is family and friends, but it's, it's, if I've got something to say, I'll pop it up on Lady Chardonnay and I'll, I want to talk about something and, and it is, it's a silly and lighthearted thing. And I'll talk about, you know, yummy food or wine or stuff that's happened to me and my friends and just, yeah, just lots of different eclectic things about my life. And yeah, it is, it's just another little creative outlet that I like, I like to do, but I, I haven't, I don't do so much on Lady Chardonnay anymore, but if I've got something to write, I will, I'll sit down and I'll, I'll smash it out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was going to say bang it out, but smash it out yeah. works too. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Smash it out. Yeah. Pop yeah. it up and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, smash it up. Right. You know, three people read it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's expressed it's out. Myself. I've expressed yourself and you've kept the gate mm. clear so the next thing can come through when it's ready. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's, that's what it's like. You know, so you just you you can't have all the cows sort of like pushing in at the gate. You've got to have them go through no. one at a time. <laughs> No, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> wait, wait. That doesn't work. No. <laughs> ah, cool. And what else have you got on? Um, um, so, yeah, I was talking about working on my medieval symbol oracle. Yes. yes. And I'm also working on a potions oracle at the moment. Ooh. Now, this, yeah, this just like in the middle of the pandemic when we're all going oh my god is this like the black plague what the hell's going on here mm -hmm. <sighs> bit of a tough time mm -hmm. i got i got this whole notion you know of like this whole idea of a potion to sort of cure everything this like cure all potions and it really stuck in my head and i did start i've started working on an oracle about um so you know how certain plants have healing properties so mm. each plant becomes mm. a potion and it's sort of going in the direction of maybe magical cocktails and magical oils but um i'm still it's still very much in in the in its um infancy this this deck but 
it's um it's it's a bit like the unicorn vibe where it's quite light-hearted and magical but it will have recipes for people to try rather than spells so like proper little mm. recipes of little yummy magical potions <laughs> and oils and and all, all that kind of thing that I, I remember as a child making potions and you know mixing up crazy things and just being obsessed with the whole idea of magical potions really so <laughs> that's where that's come from so um yeah that, that's what I'm working on at the moment and um there's a there's another deck that I've got an idea I probably I won't talk about it but yeah I've got another idea marinating as well but they do they do come to me it's very interesting the the concepts because I've got a visual diary and like, that's one thing we learn in design mm. you get yourself a visual diary and any ideas you have you just keep you just keep writing down yeah just like flip through the pages and write everything down yeah. and I've got like visual diary stacked high over there yeah. <laughs> my yeah yeah where I've just kept every you know every thought or every idea that's come to me I've I've put in there and that does help that's another another thing that really helps the creative process is that yeah is that discipline of actually writing it down and getting it down on paper and committing to making sure you get every idea I mean, I'll have notebooks everywhere. I've got a couple in the bedroom. I've got a big stack here. I've got a couple downstairs. If I can't find one, I'll steal my husband's. <laughs> Rip the page out, put it in later. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, the whole book's gone, is it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I did get into trouble for that. Did you? Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah. Color-coded, these are mine. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, lots lots of books and lots of ideas and lots of writing down of things. So if if that's my creative process in a nutshell, mm. it's constant, constant writing it down, drawing little things, mm. um, whatever ideas coming to me, I'll I'll, I'll capture it. I've got to capture it. <laughs> yeah, and then later yeah. um, bits can be pulled out and and collated into themes or yeah. idea of groups groups of, of ideas together. Yes, yeah. yes, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. So it sounds so ordered and chaotic at the same time, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it is, and I think that's the way I work. Because um, I um, when I think about a lot, uh, back down my work history, so I'd always be working as a waitress or in hospitality because it was easy work to get, mm. and it meant that I could also have the headspace to create as well. Yes. You know, you, when understand. you're a waitress, yes. you go to work, you do the work, and you come home. <laughs> and you don't think about <laughs> it to the next year. You don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> but um, for, the last, for the last five years, I've worked in admin, um, and doing a, an admin job, and I've surprised myself with how bloomin' logical <laughs> and pedantic that I can be. Ah. <laughs> Which is great when you're working in admin because you've got yes, to be pedantic you and do. you've got to be logical and yeah. you've got to have a real attention for detail. And I'm like, admin, where have you been all my life? <laughs> I haven't had this job before. And so I think it does it does help having that that kind of experience um, to create order from artwork again I'm, com I'm coming back to yes when you look at my artwork it is quite whimsical and childlike and, and a little chaotic and strange and cute and all that but to bring it into alignment it does need to have that structure to it and it does need to have that that logic and that attention to detail and that that does that does really help you know as they say don't give up your day job <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but the day job is helping you in a way too. The day Keeping job that, helps yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. All, it's all just come together. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny actually because, you know, I've done admin work over the years as well and it, it it is a sort of job where you can leave it when you leave the office. But sometimes, depending, mm. I suppose, on how high up, and I've never been high up in the ranks, but, um, mm. you know, it can come home with you too you know so like oh i've got to prepare this yeah I've got to make sure that meeting's going to go ahead and <laughs> yeah it, look, it, it it does because i do work at a, a wedding venue mm. and so sometimes i will go oh, 
okay no i need to i need to do that and i need to make sure that this has happened just because you know weddings they're very emotional times <laughs> and they are very sure attention to detail <laughs> i've got to get the perfection happening yeah. and so, so yeah sometimes i will i will bring it home with me yeah i will mm. but but i'm trying to stop that so much but i also want the bride to have the perfect day so you know, sure. it's a yeah. Well, my goodness, we've gone, we've had a very interesting and um, substantially, we, long, we have. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much um, for sharing all of your insights and, and processes and I've, I've learned heaps um, because, oh, cool. you know, yeah. as a, is, you know, there's lots that goes on in the background here that, you know, isn't mm. obvious to the eye as well. So I'm always curious about other people's processes. And um, thank you. Mm. <laughs> thank you for oh, sharing all of that. Thank you so that. much. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for the opportunity as well. It's lovely. Oh, yeah. It's my pleasure. And thank you for the beautiful decks because um, without them. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yes, yeah. I love them. <laughs> that's it mm. all right well um thank you again and um maybe we can catch up again when you've got uh your next deck out and we can talk about yeah, go absolutely. into more detail with those when they come out yes, yes. Yeah. I, will, I will have plenty to say <laughs> excellent well it's a date then <laughs> cool. lovely thank you so much Joe. you're welcome all right thank you for watching and uh we'll catch you up again uh in our next video okay see you